Welcome to the 365 Mrs. Sinta Show, episode 330. Uh, we have uh, a few different interesting uh, combinations of messages. Uh, first up, we have uh, something for Outlook and Teams where you can respond and say, I'm following this meeting. I'm not necessarily attending, but I'll follow it. Um, we have uh, slashes coming to Teams, Teams Compose message box. Uh, so we're seeing the slashes in other places. What does it mean for teams? And lastly, a special Viva Engage community that will, uh, in a one click, create a place for you to uh, drive adoption of Copilot in Microsoft 365. This is episode 330. Yeah, doodly, do, 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 I love it. Do. <clears throat> I'd love it. And I love the, you know, I was like, slash. We're going to slash. Um, the, <laughs> hello, everyone. Hi. Welcome. That slash we, actually is, is just a little too close to a dab, which is like so. Oh, no, like, no, no, no. I was not dabbing. Decade. Let's, let's make no. sure. No, I will never hear the end of that. Um, <laughs> thank you, everyone, for being here. This is a special episode because you're here and we feel oh. honored that you're watching and listening on the yeah. audio podcast as well. We're, we're very honored. And you know what? We'd be even more honored if you just share this episode out with your friends and family and your coworkers, um, you know, just copy the URL or send them to 365mcs.com. You can do that on all the socials via email. I'm I'm a, I'm a firm believer in email, so you can use email still. You believe and, in it, uh, do you? I do. It's a thing. And it's a thing. If you don't, well, if you don't believe in it, it still is there. So yeah, oh, it doesn't matter nice. if you believe or not. It's well put. There. Well yeah. put. Yeah. So please, uh, and and while you're on those channels, those social channels, might as well hit us up. We are at 365MCS. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this episode, the things we cover. Um, and if you're on YouTube, you know, hit us up in the uh, comments as well. Smash that thumb. You, hit the bell. I think I'm done now. I, I've yeah, done no, all I was, the, I was uh, just picking up on you said you're still a believer in email. You know, one thing yeah. that we do not have, Daniel. Okay. We need to have a show at m365mcs.com email address that people Are you saying can we don't? hit us up on. Do we have one? Yeah. What is it? Let's go with show at 365mcs.com. <laughs> hit us up. We'd love to hear from you. Make sure you create that address um, after <laughs> the show. And, Hold know, on. i got to go do something. Between now but... and the editing process. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hit oh, us up. Cool. Show. At 365mcs.com. Dot com. If, you, if you'd like to be on the show, if you would like to uh, provide some input, hit us up. We'd love to hear from you there. But but more so, we'd love to hear from you in the comments and, and on the socials, all yep. the socials that matter. We are there. Yep. Um, we've, we've done enough of that. One thing I would like to say, I have stickers. I am going to be in Orlando at the Microsoft 365 oh, yeah. Community Conference. This week, already, I'm there. You're listening and watching. I'm already there. So hit, find me. I'm going to give you a sticker because I don't want to bring any of them back. I have a workshop Monday uh, talking about Copilot and grounding in SharePoint and then a session on Wednesday. Find me. I'll be at the MGCI booth. Um, whatever. Just find me. I'd love to hear MGCI. What does that stand for? That is the Microsoft Global Community Initiative. Uh it is uh, lots of things. One of the things is um, that it backs, that we back is the communitydays.org, but there's lots of things going on in the community. So there's going to be a booth there and, and with a lot of other booths. But anyway, um, love, to, love to talk to you, say hi, get a selfie with you. So hit me up. Yeah, I think and, we've and done. Hats yeah. off to all the work that that, that community does or that, that committee does um, because yeah. it is. Uh, Amazing what the community does, and uh, it's cool to be able to encourage activities and 
Saturdays yeah. that people get together and do things and promote that, you know, and lift up those new user groups as well to, to uh, increase community. Absolutely. Um, you know what would also increase community? Having time not being in meetings. That would also help well, yeah. you have time for community. So uh, let's jump into it and talk about how we can do that. Is that okay with okay. you? Sure, sure. How do we so, get out of our meetings? Our <laughs> Well, let's not frame it exactly. Oh, oh like right, that. right, but, right, right. Uh, first message: Microsoft Outlook and Microsoft Teams respond to meetings with follow. I put it in oh. quotes when I, but follow MC seven eight six three two five. So in the new Outlook, okay. So when we're talking about this, we're talking about new Outlook. Mm. You're going to be able to respond instead of saying yes, I'll attend or no, I'm not going to attend. You're also going to have an option to say follow. And what that is saying is I'm not declining this because I still want to be involved and updated mm. about this meeting's topic. However, I ain't showing up. So, I mean, it's just. Check your you attitude, know. mate. Come on. <laughs> I ain't showing up, boys. So, um,. <laughs> So you click on uh, follow and it tells the organizer, hey, this person, and it's telling the organizer, if they have new Outlook, that this person is following. They're not going to attend. And this also means that when the organizer comes into the meeting, they're going to get a reminder from teams that people are following this, meaning they're not here Maybe you want to hit record. It's going to be a prompt. I think that's actually really cool. Mm. Um, it, it also, when the organizer is looking at the meeting information, they can highlight over the, you know, an information dot on people saying that it's following. Um, when they get your response that you're following, it's going to say, hey, maybe consider recording this uh, meeting because... As a follower, hey, as a follower, I am going to get access to, still have access to the meeting. Uh, and I think what that means is, and there's some guessing we're having to do a little bit on some of this, but is that if I actually wanted to attend, I could still attend. If things happened, maybe I could still attend because it's going to show up in my calendar as free, but it's still going to be there. But I also have access to chat. Um, which is interesting, which brings us other questions about what does that mean? And because if we decline now, then we don't get that. But if we do tentative, do we have access to chat? Uh, if we don't join the chat anyway, so there's some, still some questions and maybe we'll talk about that in a second, but for this, um, I think it will definitely help those people who, are into too many meetings, have been invited to too many meetings, instead of saying, okay, tentative, but I'm actually never going to show up. And so the organizer's like, okay, they they said tentative. Are they going to show up? And they ping you, hey, are you going to come to the meeting? No. Um, it tells them I'm not coming, but I'm still interested. So I think that's great. Uh, I'm going to ask you, Darren, I'm going to prep you with this about you know, okay. whether you like this or not, what you think about the differences between this and tentative and everything. But I want to mention to people, if you are using old Outlook, so classic Outlook, you are not going to see this option to follow. And then if the organizer is using the classic version, then they're not going to see that you followed either they're actually going to see you as tentative which well like they get a um, an email body that says this person followed yeah but the but if they go the to RSVP the tracking response yeah the tracking of responses it's going to show tentative mm. um so Daryl do you like this what are your thoughts on the whole comparing it to tentative you know all of that what what are your thoughts mm. uh well first of all uh, I would like to take this as an opportunity, a, a PA, you know, public announcement or public, uh, you know, to, to encourage people. RSVP to meetings. Don't just leave them there as non-responsive. 
um, it helps the meeting planner. It helps the people who plan to present and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so with this follow feature, love it. All right, I actually think that it is better than better than saying it's tentative, because you actually have a clearer intention. I'm saying I I can't attend this, uh, but I, I am so I'm still definitely interested in the content. I still want to be a um, asynchronous participant in this meeting. How about that? Yeah, so we can still yeah, participate in the chat afterwards. I can catch up with the recording, which you can chat. anyway. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. but it's really it's really I think around the chat now. Huh, uh, that is the the the, the questionable part, though, uh, Daniel. We want to know uh, or have a better idea of how this chat operates, because uh, if we accept the meeting, we uh, can be part of the chat. And sometimes we have experienced those pings that get annoying over the top of what we're trying to work on at the time. Um, Whereas a follow, does that mean that uh, we will be able to access that chat afterwards, but we're not going to get those notifications? Um, that'd be my wondering. Um, and then with tentative, you know, that tentative status where classic, um, classic organizers see as uh, tentative, um, that you're tentatively accepting the meeting, but when you when you choose follow, apparently one of the benefits is that your it'll still appear in your calendar, but it'll show as free. So you'll see a block, and that's a nice reminder that oh there was a meeting on that's right, and I can go back and I can look at the recap. But it still allows people to book my time. Now for a classic viewer, when it, when they see tentative, are they going to see tentative as in I'm tentatively accepted the meeting and that shows as tentative in my calendar as availability or am I going to show as free? Daniel, I right. want you to answer this. Do you want me to answer? I am going to guess that they see you as free, but we don't know. I, yeah. Don't know. Um, but that would be my guess. Um, mm -hmm. The... Uh, which would make sense and it actually would follow along. It would be nice if the only thing it, that was tentative about this is the organizer using classic looking at their tracking sees tentative. Mm. But if they go to your calendar, it shows free or anyone else, that would be great. Just, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I hope it's not mixed. So I've got another comment to make about this too. When I first heard about this feature, no, nope. <laughs> Hey, 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 hey. I'm just joking. You, you just click follow. I'll continue and you can catch up with what I'm going to say later. <laughs> but when it was talked about, I think it was talked about alongside a co-pilot feature and the ability to say, I'm going to follow this meeting. I can even ask co-pilot about what's going on and what are the key to points, attend. but I'm not actually attending. Yeah. So yeah. it's nice that we're seeing this and we can actually get a clear picture that this follow capability is not just for those with the AI capabilities, Copilot or, or Teams Premium, but doesn't matter what level you're at, you can still follow to a capacity yeah. based on what your licenses enable you to do. Absolutely, and, and that's you, you brought, brought that up. I, I think it's a great point of, um, and will be a great functionality, I think people will see is, well, if you have Teams Premium, then maybe when you click follow, after the meeting, it, it sends – now, I'm just making all this up, okay? I, I don't know. But it sends you the recap? That would be amazing. Like, instead of having to go to the recap and see what happened, send me an email because I followed it. Send me mm. an email with the recap. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. Microsoft, I hope you're listening. Um, great. Listening. So, yeah. Well, we know so, they listen, Daniel, because yes. sometimes they send screenshots and say – is this going to be something I should watch? Right. Uh -huh. um, that's an inside thing, people. Sorry. Targeted release rolling out late April, completed by late May, and then general availability early June, completed by early July 2024. So definitely looking forward to that. You know what I'm also looking forward to, Daryl? I want to get rid of Microsoft Teams 
parentheses work or school. Can I just get rid of it, please? Well, uh, the name or that you just don't want to use teams at your work or school place? This is my lead in to the to the next. All message, right, all right, so. right, 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 right. All right. <clears throat> Microsoft Teams open brackets. Work or school, close brackets. Um, application on Windows will be renamed to Microsoft Teams. This is MC7863. It, it, it's not big news, but it kind of is. I mean, it's Don't a we good already thing. have a Microsoft Teams? I'm, uh, wait. Yes, yes we do. But, but on Windows, we've had, to, we've had to call it out as being one for work and school and one that is for personal, but but it was just called Teams. And this really did cause uh, some confusion uh, for those of us adopting Windows 11 early on. Teams Personal was built into Windows 11. It popped up. It did all sorts of things. And change managers spent a lot of time, or you know, organizations spent a lot of time saying, don't click that one. Click the one that is uh, work and school, okay? It's nice and clear, but don't click the one that just says Teams, even though it looks a little different. They said it in that accent too, by the way. I was about to say, was that like a Scottish slash um, German or something? Like, no, I'm not even going to try and pretend to say which dialect or part of okay. part of the UK it's there because I'll get it wrong and, and yep. we'll get a lot of people – Writing to um, show at 365mcs.com. All right. But continuing on, because this is supposed to be a short message, Daniel. Stop interrupting me. Uh, <laughs> is that it's going to be renamed to how it should be, right? Microsoft Teams, the one that we more frequently use for work or school, is going to be called Microsoft Teams. And uh, the one that is for personal use will be renamed to slash personal, or rather hyphen personal we don't want to confuse it with slash because that's another whole other message in the agenda um and this is going to uh, this is going to happen rolling out um early may and uh, targeted release and complete mid-may and general availability what? <laughs> why are we calling this general availability it's just a rename oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> excuse me Wow, um, making you cough and everything. Oh, totally. I like I just realized that w why the fanfare. Um mid mid May 2024 expected to be complete early June 2024. I'm getting cynical. Sorry. It's just Wow. You know, it's like having this, this up, then. <laughs> Yeah, but no, you know, sometimes we see messages where it says we're really excited to announce this thing that we're removing. Like, what? Mm -hmm. Anyway, um good move. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Glad to have the message. Moving on, mm. uh, thinking of Segway processing, going to Copilot, asking for Segway oh, to try no. and map this message through to what Daniel is going to talk about, which is something to do with Power BI. Wow, that was really, really lazy. That was There's some changes in Power BI, and they're going to happen at a tenant level. Oh, my god! Is that cleverer? Wow, okay. Upcoming changes to tenant settings for See? Power BI Copilot features. MC785029. So this is there is a setting in the tenant settings for Power BI that says um, users can use a preview of Copilot and other features powered by Azure OpenAI. Okay. And that setting, if you have not played around with it, if you've not modified that setting at all, then Microsoft's gonna turn it on for you. You're welcome. So the, this change is basically we're turning it on because maybe not enough people have turned it on. I don't know. They're forcing it on you. So that's the reason why we're covering this is that we want to tell you that uh, rolling out late May 2024 through mid-June 2024, Microsoft's going to enable that. So if for some reason you want to disable it, I'm not suggesting you do that. But if you need to do that for some reason, then you're going to need to do that before May 20th. It gives you instructions. Basically, you can go and enable the feature, turn it off, you know, basically enable it, save it, turn it off, save it again, and then they won't force it on you. Um, I don't like when Microsoft does stuff like this, to be honest, um, but I get it. Uh, so just make sure that you go in and do that. See, quick message. But make sure you, you hit the – if make a decision. If you made a decision that, hey, we're not enabling that, well, now you're going to have to go and enable it and then turn it off. Um, 
or Microsoft's going to force it on you. So Wow, that, that's how you do a quick message. Yeah. So let's see if you can uh, practice. Well, no, not on this <laughs> Not <one>. this one. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about slashes earlier. Tell me about slashes in Teams. Yeah, so uh, f- yes, no, I just... I'm restraining the cheekiness because Australians and New Zealanders know. Um, okay. But yeah, Microsoft Teams introducing slash commands in the compose box. Mm-hmm. MC78-5024. Mm-hmm. Daniel, we've had slash commands. Where have we mm-hmm. seen those before? In Teams. Mm-hmm. In the you know in where? the search box. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. So we're going oh, to see some Oh, this was a test? Of, Did I get 100? Yeah. You got you got a hundred percent. You you know like when teachers do that thing. Like I'm looking for an answer, looking for an answer. No, that's not what was in my head. Let's try again. But good answer, <laughs> you know. Um, you just did that. Slash commands. Uh, 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 well, as we read through them, um, there's a few that are going to be available in the Teams Compose box where we write our messages. And as uh, this message goes, we have a, a lovely animated GIF. So. I think I think Microsoft does listen to our show, Daniel, because we we asked it, we asked for a few more animated gifts. So good to see that. Right. Um, I, I, look, I've got to talk personally here at, at this point. I have got used to using forward slash because I I like using loop, and I use other applications that use a forward slash too to access a menu where I am in the moment to do something for me. And I don't have to necessarily memorize what that thing is because often these things have tooltips like this one does too. So I quite like this that in what appears to be a chat experience, I can quickly change my status. I can um, hide the chat. I can do things with it. I can pop it out into its own separate window. Um, but there are a couple of other things it can do, Daniel, which um, I think are quite cool too. What what else might we add to a chat? We've got a couple of options here that are listed. Uh, OneNote? No, wait. <clears throat> Forward slash um, OneNote. Ooh, <laughs> is that a feature request already? <laughs> yes. Um, you know, and we see examples here. We can add loops. Um, we can um, add See, this apps. the teacher thing again, right? Like that's the thing yes. I had in mind. That's the thing you're wanting, I know. Yeah, keep going. Um, uh, we can add apps, which yeah. I think is kind of cool uh, yeah. to be able to add in. Add code, if that's your thing. So we can add uh, several things. Yeah, code Anything. block. Uh, mm-hmm. Even one there that's forward slash record a video clip. Mm. The one that isn't there, and I have noticed this mm. too, I think this is the case. No, this isn't the case. I get my forward slashes mixed up in which applications mm. I'm thinking of. And this is the thing. I think um, these have been added into Teams as a convenience, and they've been brought down to the place where we're typing rather than the search box at the top for convenience. So that in line where we're working, we can access things that we might want that experience to do, whether it be attach something or to switch things on and off, even down to settings or shortcuts, you can show a, um, a banner there. Now, we're basing all of this on a render in a animated GIF, right? right. So it, it could be that these aren't going to be the final choices. But I like them. But, Daniel, do you think they'll catch on for try – to, try to think beyond the old fogies that we are – I mean, sorry, the Speak classic your, IT users. Speak for yourself. Well, we're not new. <laughs> I'm new. I don't know what you're talking about. New to, new to the workforce. What, what are the cool kids new like to the to day. use? I'm new to the, to the day. That's what, to, yeah. to this day. Um, yeah. What was your question? <laughs> See, no. you are old. <laughs> no, no. So you were... Forward slash you, remember. <laughs> you were asking, will people actually use this? Yeah. The answer is no. And so do we move on to the next message or are you speaking no. yeah here here's here's the thing do i think most people and now i'm not so most people when i say most people i'm not including like power users and i'm not including it people mm-hmm. i'm talking about most business people who were who use teams to chat and have meetings and share files blah, blah, all that stuff right do i think they're going to be going oh i need to slash code and insert some XML here. No, 
They're not going to use that. Are they going to slash settings so I can get to settings of, no, they're going to go click up and do settings. Why would, you know, they're not going to do that. That's not what normal people Mm. do. Tech people. Yeah, sure. Power users who get used to it. uh, Sure. Um, loop. No, they're going to click the loop button. Why would I, why would I go slash loop when I can just click the loop button? I, I I just don't know. I, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think it's going to be a, you know, I, uh, yeah. Anyway, well, let me put it another way. What would you add to this list that would make it useful? Because because I I have an idea, but I want to hear what you what you have to say. Um, one thing that came to mind very quickly is show me everyone that's in this team. Yeah. So I can at mention uh, figure out who I can at mention. Um, show me tags that are available to me in this team. Um, stuff like that, that instead of having to go show me membership, you know, Mm. those kind of things that take me three or four clicks to get to do those kind of things. And I might start using it Mm. in chat. Um, I don't know. I don't know about chat. I can, I can see, uh, uh, well, I can see that forward slash copilot or forward slash compose or forward slash draft might get in there somewhere. Eventually, mm-hmm. um, but in other places we can use a forward slash to attach a link to a document, but see or that, refer to again. a document. No, forward slash like an begin button. to type. Uh, like I don't know, maybe <laughs> that maybe that one's a maybe for me. I can see maybe. it, but I can also not see it because there's a button. Click the button. Well, but if I could start typing the name and it actually find it very easily, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, uh, I, I love that we pause and we, we take a deeper dive and we offer value. So, I mean, we're, we're reminding you to like this episode and mention it. And, you know, once you see the chapters in this YouTube video, you can also share mm-hmm. just that chapter if you think that this was quite a cool deep dive. Yep. Um, targeted release will begin rolling out mid may 2024 and expect to be complete late may and general availability worldwide gcc gcc high dod will begin rolling out mid june and expect to be complete late june let's see what these forward slashes can do and what more will arrive sure uh, moving into uh well let's let's talk uh, community daniel um and leveraging mm. community Leveraging community to drive adoption of wow. A certain Are you just going to read the whole message with your? No, I'm 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 doing the why. You know the whole Simon Sinek thing. The why before <laughs> you actually even talk about the message. I'm way ahead right. of you, Simon. <laughs> Microsoft Viva Engage: colon, New adoption community for Microsoft Copilot for Microsoft 365. How many Microsofts can be in one title? MC seven eight four one five. Six. So this is coming soon. A special feature, and it really is a special feature. Viva Engage is going to say to those admins, so the network admins, right? That's the term left over from Yama. Um, the network admins and corporate communicators is going to give them a banner in their feed, okay, in their home feed, and say, "Hey, don't you need a copilot community?" within Viva Engage. Um, And they're going to be able to dismiss it, but always go into the settings of Viva Engage and there'll be a section, a a button, or I don't know what you call that. Like a, it's not a button, but it is a button. You click on it. So I don't know. Um, Tile. Tile. That sounds better. Um, In, in settings. So you'll be able to click that. So what does it give you though, if you roll it out? So it's going to, create a community, surprise, surprise, and have uh, some content and available to you. It's going to have some suggested content, some feed banners to bring awareness. Um, it's, uh, well, that's the banners it's going to have, but it's going to have one click creation. So be able to click it and just, it's going to do it. Suggested content, conversation starters as part of it, uh, top questions. And th- one thing that I'm very interested in, and I raise my eyebrow when I say this, very (laughs) interesting, is this suggested members. 
So we see more about that in one of the screenshots that you can see at the top right. It shows um, a basically the functionality that in the community it, uh, where it shows members underneath it, it's going to say expand your copilot community. And it says, and at least that's what's in this rendering, add other users with copilot licenses to this community. And then it says add all. It's a link there. You can click add all. Hmm. Well, I think that's interesting functionality because what if I'm an, an admin, I've created this community, but I'm not an admin of anything else, just of Eva Engage. So I don't have access to who, who has licenses to Copilot. Okay, so is it going to show for me that I can click everyone? So now I've, I've basically invited everyone to this community that has a license, mm -hmm. and now I know how many licenses are in my environment, and I know who have them now because I've invited them, yet I couldn't actually see that you know anywhere else. It's just very interesting functionality. But the other interesting part of that is, um, hey, Microsoft, let's do this for other products. Yay. I mean, make it easy to create a community around other products like, I don't know, I'm just pulling stuff out of my hat, Glint or Power BI or, um, you know, any other power platform, uh, you know, any other that uh, services Amplify. that have their – Amplify anybody. Well, corporate communications, you know, the, yeah. that, uh, you know, any of the things that you have to have special, you know, you have a, a separate license for or whatever, make it easy to create a community based around that and invite everybody that has that. That would be amazing. I think that'd be interesting. I agree. Um, you know, I think um, yeah. it's, it's things like this where I know it is targeted at Copilot and definitely that's, yeah. um, it's going to be important to, to leverage what's capable, what we do have in our tool set to drive adoption and reach out to people. Um, but with the investment being put into it for Copilot, other products surely could benefit from this too. It'd be nice. It really would be. Hmm. So uh, rolling out to a Viva Engage environment near you, general availability worldwide, late May 2024, through early June 2024. So I'm, I'm kind of excited about that to bring awareness, drive adoption, help people with, you know, I, um, I'm, I'm going to give you a little teaser as to the workshop I'm doing, uh, next, uh, during the, the conference, um, using this to bring out suggested, uh, prompts, help people to create prompts, um, I mean, there's there's a lot of things you could do with this this type of community. So, uh, I think it's pretty interesting. Hmm. And Daryl, I Damn. sent you a PDF, and I need you to sign it. So, if you could go ahead and do that, uh, and then annotate it with some text boxes uh, with your thoughts yeah. and feelings, that'd yeah. be great. Yeah. No, I will need to annotate it because um, this document you sent to me, I'm going to have some feedback. I mean, some feedback before I sign anything. Our transitions this episode are very, very interesting. I'm just going to say. Oh, yeah. Hey, and if you've got feedback, send us an email to show at 365mcs.com. Yes, it works. Go ahead and send it. It does. It does. We've used it three times now. Microsoft OneDrive, colon. Pause for effect. Annotate PDFs with text boxes. This is MC783215. Oh, oh, all right. Um, when you open up PDF from OneDrive, we have a lovely PDF reader that doesn't just show you the PDF in a way to scroll through it, but it also lets you um, edit it and annotate with ink and with highlighters. Um, but what has been missing up until this point is a text box. So that's what this message is about. Add a text box to annotate on a PDF from OneDrive. Really useful. Uh, I actually would like to also see maybe comment bubbles. That could be good too. Um, but yeah, Daniel raises a point though. Like, How often do we open a PDF from the OneDrive app? So, I mean, we're opening it. We often yeah. use it and it sort of opens up an edge for you. Is that right, Daniel? 
Yeah, I have PDFs. They open up in Edge for me, which is amazing because Edge has this functionality to be able to right. highlight, write. Um, I, I will caution people to, and I did not know this, so our listeners are getting some uh, interesting information here that I did not know. When you do that, when you open up a PDF in Edge and write on it, and I don't know about uh, OneDrive because I have not tested it, it actually doesn't flatten it. Meaning oh. anyone who opens that PDF in Edge can get the eraser and erase whatever you've written. Okay? Hmm. So caution. Um, you know, when you're doing that hmm. test. So what I have found is if you flatten it, I, I can use another app, a PDF editor app that I've had for a while. You save it, and, but you flatten the annotations, then it actually mm -hmm. becomes part of the PDF. Just test it, people. Don't rely on covering inf sensitive information up and then sending it. Right. Test it. Make sure it actually flattens it before uh, it gets sent to other people. I've got so, a question for you. Yeah. When, when you're opening that PDF in Edge, mm. is it that it's downloading the file and letting you edit the file and then save it? Or is it putting it in some kind of collaborative space in Edge where you can annotate and play around with the annotations? It lets you save. Oh, okay. I mean, there's a save button, so you annotate and you click save, and it saves it to that original document hmm. when you close it. And then in my testing, I've reopened that file. And I'm able to erase things and not just an edge. I'm able to open that file in my PDF editor application and erase those annotations. Ah, I see. So yeah, yeah. just be careful people. Um, but I'm excited about this because if you're in OneDrive in the browser and you click on a PDF, it open like you said, it opens it up in that viewer. So even if you're mm -hmm. an edge, it doesn't allow you to use edges tools. Um, I often am looking for files in Windows Explorer, you know, and from Outlook, right, and and able to just open it up and opens an edge. So, um, mm. it's nice to be able to have that functionality if you open it up in the browser, uh, from in in OneDrive in the browser. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So with this uh, step five, it does talk about when you're finished, you can save those changes and it exit the edit mode and saves it to the PDF. So that's good. Right. When is this arriving? It's generally available uh, mid-May and expected to be complete by early June. And you know something else is that complete, Indeed. Daniel? This episode. <laughs> ah, good job. We, we've made it uh, and we haven't collapsed on ourselves. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for being here to watch the potential collapse, but not of the show. Of the event horizon. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Make sure you leave us a comment. Please share the episode out. We greatly appreciate it. We see you. We really do appreciate you. And um, we would like to hear from you as well. Thank you so much uh, for being here. And Daniel, have you ever thought like maybe yeah. we need to have like a, a Patreon role where, you know, we scroll hundreds of names up the side of the screen sure. for those who Let's have paid it. the extra thing? Yeah. yeah. If Send that us appeals an email to you. At show at 365mcs.com. <laughs> with uh, your payment, and we will uh, scroll your name. It'll be great. Yeah. And this was an episode brought to you by email. Thanks right. all for joining. See you next week.